Hello everyone. Apparently our Zoom class session from yesterday did not record. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the problems we went through in the Zoom class session. Each of these problems is parallel in form to the problems on your assignment. So being able to really understand these problems will help you a lot when doing your assignment. Okay, let's try out some problems. Here's the first one. For a normal distribution, identify the z-score for 14% of the distribution on the right side or in the right tail. So what we need to do first is we're going to draw it out and then we'll visualize what this looks like. So for this first one, what we're going to do is determine about where we think about 14% in the right tail is going to be. We don't really know, but let's just guess that it's somewhere around here. So what we're looking for is the area in the right tail, and this is the right tail right here. We're looking for uh, the z-score that relates to 14%. So first of all, what column am I gonna be using on the unit normal table? Column B, C, or D? Well, this is the tail area, so we're gonna use column C. Now, what proportion are we gonna look for in column C? Well, we have 14%, and 14% written as a decimal, is 0.14. So what we're going to look for in column C is the closest thing to 0.14. So let's do that. So in my Z table, my unit normal table, I'm going to look for something in column C that's close to 0.14. Might not be exact, but that's okay. And so we end up with um, the closest one looks like it's 0.1401. There are some others that are close, but this is the very closest amount in the C column to 0.14, and that equates to a z-score of 1.08. So the answer then is a z equals to 1.08. As a reminder, the z-table is both positive and negative. We use the same z-scores for positive or negative, but since we were looking for the right side, this is a positive 1.08. Let's do the next one. For a normal distribution, identify the z-score for 2% of the distribution on the left side or in the left tail. So let's do that. So this time we're looking for 2% in the left tail. I'm going to estimate that it's going to be something like this over here. And what column are we going to use? Well, again, it's going to be column C because we're looking for the tail region. And how do we make 2% into a decimal we just move the decimal place over by two, so one and then two. So we're looking for 0 0.02 on our unit normal table. So let's look at column C for 0 0.02 in the tail. So I'm going to look in my unit normal table for something close to 0 0.02 or 2% 2 in the tail. And I end up with 0 0.0202. 0 .0 That's going to be the closest proportion to 0 0.02, and that equates to a z-score of 2.05, but we're going to call that a negative 2.05 because we're looking in the left tail. So the z-score that sets off the lower 2% of the distribution is a negative 2.05. I'm going to put that on the distribution so we can visualize this. So um, just a little bit more than a z-score of 2 is a z-score of negative 2.05. So this is the boundary for the lower 2%. This z-score is the place where the lower 2% starts. Let's look at the next one. Final exam scores in a statistics class were normally distributed with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 2. What is the probability that a randomly selected student will score 78 or higher? So we have the score of 78. We want to know how many are, what proportion is higher than that. But the score of 78 is a raw score, and we can't use raw scores with the z-table. We have to convert all of our raw scores to z-scores. So let's do that right now. So first, I want to take a look at this distribution and try to sort of map out what we've got. So we have a mean of 75, so I'm going to put the mean right there. I know my standard deviation is 2, so I'm just going to kind of fill this in a little bit. So I know that a score at 1 standard deviation is going to be 77, a score at 2 standard deviations is going to be 79, etc. So my score of 78 would be about, let's say it would be about here. 
And what was I interested in? I was interested in the probability of scoring 78 or higher. So I'm going to fill in this area right here. Or probability of a score of 78 or higher. So when I fill this in, this is the area that I'm interested. I want to know how much is here. So am I going to use column B, C, or D? Well, again, that's column C. Whenever we're looking at the tail area, we're looking at column C. And so what we need to do is we need to find the z-score that equals a score of 78, and then we can look up on the table and see how much is in the tail. So the z-score formula, as a reminder, is the score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, we can do that. The score right here at seven is 78. The mean is 75. And the standard deviation was 2. So we end up with 3 over 2, or a z-score of 1.50. It's positive because it's on this side of the distribution. It's to the right of the mean. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at our z-table for the area in the tail associated with a z-score of 1.50. So we know our z-score. Now we just need to figure out what sort of real estate is here. What is the proportion or the chunk that is here? Let's do that. So I'm looking for my z-score of 1.50. And then I want to look for the proportion in the tail. And the proportion in the tail is 0 0.0668. OK, so that is the proportion of scores that are higher than a raw score of 78 or a z-score of 1.5. So what we would say is that there is a 6.68% chance of randomly selecting a score that is 78 or higher in this distribution when we have a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 2. Here's our next one. Final exam scores in a statistics class were normally distributed with a mean of 75, standard deviation of 2. That sounds familiar. What is the probability that a randomly selected student will score 79 or lower? Okay, we've got a different problem here. So let's map this out. So first I'm going to put in that my mean is 75. I have a standard deviation of 2, right? I'm going to throw those in there. And I'm going to be looking for... Um, let me fill this in. Everything lower than a score of 79, right? So my I know that my score of 79 is going to be about right here because 75 plus 2 is 77 plus 2 is 79. So this is where my score is. But I can't look this score of 79 up on the unit normal table. I need to turn this into a z-score. But before I do that, I want to figure out what am I actually looking for? If I'm looking for scores of 79 or lower, I'm going to cross all the way over here. I'm going to fill in all this area. It's a big chunk, isn't it? So what column am I going to use? What column takes a score that's on one side of the mean and crosses all the way to the tail of another side of the mean? And that's column B. So we're going to be first converting our score of 79 to a z-score and then finding that amount in column B. That'll tell the proportion of scores that are 79 or lower. So let's take a look first. Well, first let's figure out our z-score. That's what we need to do. Our z-score formula, as a reminder, is the score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we have our score of 79 minus the mean of 75 divided by the standard deviation of 2 4 divided by 2 gives us a z of a positive 2.00 since it's on this side of the distribution. But we knew that already because we kind of figured out that. So we're going to be looking for column B for a z-score of 2. And that will tell us how much real estate this amount takes up. So let's take a look at the z-table. I'm on my z-table and here's a z-score of 2. I'm looking for column B and I end up with 0.9772. So I'm going to put that right now on the actual distribution. This means that this whole area right here is 0.9772 of the distribution. And we could say that 97.72% of the scores are below 79. 
And so I'm curious if 97.72% are below 79, how much are above 79? Look at your column C amount and see what that is. So column C, the proportion in the tail is 0 0.0228. If you add up these two numbers, oops, 0.9772 and 0 0.0228, it equals 100%. Think about that. Whatever's not in the body is in the tail. And all of the scores together equal 100%, or if you're adding up the proportions, they add up to 1.00. So keep that in mind. And this is how we would write it. P means probability. The probability of selecting a score 79 or lower is equal to 0.9772 or 97.72% chance. The next one, the systolic blood pressure given in millimeters of males has an approximately normal distribution with one, a mean of 125 and a standard deviation of 15. What is the z-score for a blood pressure of 130 millimeters? Well, you might be looking at this and saying, wait a minute, this is deceptively easy. And it is, it's just asking you for the z-score. So let's calculate the z-score. So we have everything we need to figure out the z-score. We have the z-score formula here, score minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. We know our mean, our standard deviation, and our score. So we can just plug all this in. So z is going to be equal to my score of 130 minus the mean of 125 divided by the standard deviation of 15. So we have 5 divided by 15, which gives me a z-score of a positive 0.5. So if I were to map this out on the distribution, I'll do that real quick. I know this is 1 and 2, and 0.33 is about a third of the way between 0 and 1, so my z would be right about there. Let's take a look at the next one. This looks familiar. The systolic blood pressure uh, has a mean of 125 and a standard deviation of 15. What is the z-score for a blood pressure of 120 millimeters? Well, first of all, I know it's going to be a negative z-score. How do I know that? Because my score is less than the mean. Let's work this out. Okay, so we have everything we need. We're going to take the score of 120, subtract the mean of 125. I'm going to divide it by the standard deviation of 15, which gives us 5, negative 5, excuse me, over 15, which gives a z-score of a negative point. Three, If I map it out, well, that's a bad one, isn't it? I know that my z-score of negative 0.33 is going to be about there because it's about a third of the way between 0 and negative 1. So the z-score that equates to a, score, a raw score of 120 is negative 0.33 in this case. For this next one, a normal distribution has a mean of 80 with a standard deviation of 4. If one score is randomly selected from this distribution, what is the probability that the score will be less than 87? So less than 87. And I know that my score is higher than the mean, so I already know I'm going to be looking at column B because I'm going to be crossing over the body to find all scores that are less than 87. But let's map it out. I'm going to start with this one by finding the z-score for 87. And the reason why I'm doing that is I can't look up as a raw score of 87 on the z-table. I need to turn this into a z-score before I figure out where it is in the distribution. So my score of 87 minus 80 divided by the standard deviation of 4 gives me 7 divided by 4, which gives me 1.75. So I have a z-score of 1.75. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place the z-score of 1.75 about right there. And I'm looking for all of the scores that are lower than 1.75. So I'm going to cross over here. And I look up at B, C, and D, and I see, of course, it looks like column B. So I'm going to look in column B for the proportion associated with a z-score of 1.75. Let's do that. So if I look down at 1.75, the column B amount is 9, 0.9599, which means that 0.9599 of the scores are below that z-score of 1.75. Or we might say there's a 
99.99% chance of randomly selecting a score that is lower than the score of 87, the raw score of 87. All right. For this next one, we have a normal distribution with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 4. And this time we're going to look at the probability of selecting one score in this distribution that is more than 87. So let's map this out. So for this one, you'll notice that we have the same mean, standard deviation, and score of interest. But what's different is instead of looking for the scores that are under 87, we're looking for the scores that are more than 87. So we're going to have the same z-score of positive 1.75. But this time I'm looking for all of the scores that are greater than that score of 87 or that z-score of a positive 1.75. So in order to do this, I'm going to um, look at column C for 1.75. You go ahead and do that too. Let's take a look. So I'm looking at 1.75 and we have a percent in the tail or proportion in the tail of 0 0.0401. 0 .0 Zero, 01. So in other words, we have a 4.01% chance of choosing a score that's going to be greater than 87. Here's our next one. For normal distribution, what proportion of a normal distribution is located between a z of negative 0.75 and a z of 0.75? So let's think about this for a minute. We have one z-score that's on one side of the mean. We have another z-score that's on the other side of the mean. We have to be a little creative to find the proportion that's in between these two z-scores. Let's map it out. So I'm going to locate my first z-score of a negative 0.75 about three quarters of the way between zero and negative one, there it is. And then I'm gonna locate my other z-score of a positive 0.75, about three quarters of the way there. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what area we're interested in. Well, I need to know the area between zero and a negative 0.75, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. But I also need to know the area between 0 and a positive 0.75, so I'm going to put this together. So can I use B, C, or D? Well, it looks like we can use this column D. Column D will give us the area between 0 and a negative 0.75. It'll give us the area between a 0 and a positive 0.75. So let's look up in our Z table, column D for, ne or for 0.75, because there is no positive or negative. Let's take a look. Okay, I'm coming up to positive 0.75. Here it is right here. And the column D amount for 0.75 is 0.2734. So let's put that on the chart, 0.2734. So the area between 0 and negative 0.75 is 0.2734. Now the question might come up, should this be a negative proportion? No, there's no such thing as a negative proportion. Proportions are between 0 and 1, and they're positive. Because this isn't saying that anything about the direction, it's just saying what this chunk is right here is 0.2734. What is this chunk? Well, it's also going to be the same proportion, 0.2734. So to find the area that is between negative 0.75 and plus 0.75, we just add these two proportions together and we end up with a proportion of 0.5468. So in other words, 54.68% of the scores in this distribution are between a Z of negative 0.75 and a Z of positive 0.75. That's this chunk right here all together. Now, I know that some people sometimes want to add and subtract Z scores. We're not doing that. We're adding and subtracting the proportions, the amounts that are inside each of these little pieces. All right, let's do the next one. Our next problem asks for a normal distribution. What is the proportion located between negative 1.5 and 1.5? This is very similar to the last one that we just did, so let's draw it out. Okay, if I'm gonna map out the areas that are at negative 1.5 and positive 1.5, 1.5 is halfway between 1 and 2, so I think it's going to be about here, and I think it's going to be about here. So this is negative 1.5, 
and this is positive 1.50. Okay, so that's good. We know that. Now we have to think about what is this asking us? It's asking us for the proportion between these two z-scores. So it's asking me to fill in this amount, and it's asking me to find this amount. And I can do that because I can use column D. I can find the proportion between 0 and positive 1.50 and the proportion between 0 and negative 1.50. I'm just going to look at 1.50 on my z table because the z table is both positive and negative. So let's do that. Let's look for 1.50 in column D. Okay, I'm going to scroll down to 1.50. Here it is right here, and our column D amount is 0.4332. So let's put that on the board. So I have 0.4332 for 0 to positive 1.5, but it's the same amount from 0 to negative 1.5, right? That's the same proportion. And remember, we don't use negative proportions. These are positive. 4, 6, 6, 4. So this proportion here is 96.64% of the distribution. So I've got 0.9664. I can just say that's 96.64%. In other words, most of the scores, right, are there. So we can say that the proportion of scores between a negative 1.5 and a positive 1.5 is 0.9664, or we have a 96.64 chance of selecting a score between these two z-scores. All right, let's move on. This question asks, for a normal distribution, what proportion of a normal distribution is located between z of negative 1.75 and a z of 0? Well, guess what? Whenever you have a z of 0, you're always going to use column D because that is what column D is. It's the mean of 0 and any score. So we have the mean of 0 and negative 1.75. So let's look at the table for negative 1.75. Of course, there is no negative, right? So we just look for 1.75. We're looking for the column D amount, which is 0.4599. So that is our proportion between 0 and negative 1.75. Okay, we have four more to do, and the last two are going to be really challenging. This one says we have a normal distribution and we're looking for the proportion of scores between a negative 0.25 and a z of 1. Let's map that out. Okay, so negative 0.25, I'm going to put that about here, I'm guessing. And a z score of 1, that's easy, I'm going to put that right here. And I'm being asked to find the proportion between these two scores. So I've got um, this proportion here between 0 and a negative 0.25. And then I have this portion here between 0 and 1, a positive 1. All right, so what I need to do is I need to find the column D amounts for first a negative 0.25 and then the column D amount for a positive 1. Now remember, I'm just finding it for 0.25 because the z-table does not have positives or negatives. So let's take a look at each of these numbers. So for a negative 0.25, I'm just going to look at 0.25. The column D amount is 0 0.0987. And the column D amount for a z-score of 1 is 0.3413. So just to reiterate, this little chunk here is 0 0.0987. This larger chunk is 0 0.3413. But I want to find out what these are together. We want to find the distance between these two z-scores. So I just add this up. And it looks like I have 0 0.4400. So 44% of the scores are between a z-score of negative 0.25 and a z-score of 1. Here's our next one. For a normal distribution, what is the proportion be located between a z of negative 1.25 and a z of 0? Okay, this one is just like the other one where we had a mean of 0 or a z of 0. That's the mean. So we're basically looking for a z-score of 1.25, so let's take a look at that. 
So if I scroll down z score of 1.25, I'm looking at the column D amount and it is 0.3944. All right, this one is challenging. For a normal distribution, what proportion is located between the z of negative 0.5 and a z of negative two. So this time we have both z's that are negative. This is gonna require just a little bit of different math. So let's take a look. Okay, so we have a z of negative 0.5. I'm gonna put that right here. And we have a z of negative two. That's easy enough, right there. So what I have to do is I have to find the proportion that is between these two z scores. And so in order to do that, I'm going to first find the proportion between 0 and 2, or the mean and two, 2. So I'm going to use column D. So let's right now find the proportion between a mean of 0 and 2. The column D amount is 0 0.4772. I'm going to put that down, 0 0.4772. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the proportion between the mean and negative 0 0.50 because this is going to let us know what the difference is between these two scores. So the mean to negative 0 0.50, let's just look up the mean and 0 0.50. And that is 0 0.1915. So I know this amount here and I know this amount here. What I want to do is I want to subtract out this amount from the total. So I just subtract. Easy enough. And we end up with the answer of 0.3857. So basically what I did is I took the larger of the two Z proportions and I subtracted out this piece here and that leaves me with this piece that they have in common. So the answer is 0.3857 or 38.57% of the scores are between negative 0.5 and negative 2. All right, we've got one more. For this last question, we have a Z of 0.5 and a Z of 1.75. This is, we're going to again find the amount of real estate or the proportion between these two Z scores. Let's map it out. Okay, so my Z score of positive 0.50 is about here and my z-score of positive 1.75 is about here. And I want to find all of the information between these two z-scores. So what I'm going to have to do first is I'm going to find the biggest z-score first. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1.75. So let's look at that. So my column D amount for a z-score of 1.75 is 0.4599. So that's the amount from 0 to 2. But I need to subtract out this amount that doesn't, isn't in common between these two numbers. So I need to find the amount between 0 and negative, or 0.5, excuse me, 0 and 0.5. So I'll scroll back up, find the column D amount, which is 1.1915. 1 so I take this total amount between 0 and 2, and I'm going to subtract out this amount here to find the proportion between these two z-scores. And I have 0.2684. So between a z-score of 0.5 and 1.75, we have 26.84% of the scores are within this area right here. So our answer is 0.2684. Okay, I hope this helped you. Um, again, I'm sad that the Zoom class didn't record um, yesterday, but maybe it all works out for the best. Maybe this is more helpful even than the recorded class. But if you have questions, you know where to find me.